Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Today I'm going to show you this. What a great time to be alive. New features within After Effects are dropping in each day at the moment. So, I thought I'd show you one of my favorites. Animated 3D objects. Well, and I simply love dinosaurs. So, why not create this really cool shot? Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion. Because today I'm going to show you how to recreate Jurassic World. So just follow me into After Effects. So we directly have a real world Jurassic World example. And if you watch till the end, I will also spoil a little bit about my next tutorial, which will be super cool and super intense. But now back to the shot. So I filmed this one here with my smartphone, you know? So it's a little easier for you to recreate. So I just switched the settings from 30 frames to 60 frames a second because I knew I wanted to do a lot of camera movement, but I did not want to make the tracking too hard with all the motion blur. So when choosing 60 frames, you have a shorter exposure time, obviously, and therefore less motion blur. Once we have filmed our masterpiece, let's track it in 3D space. So right click onto the footage and go to track and stabilize and track camera. And when this is finished, I quickly go through this to check if there are any annoying track points that could mess up the end result. For example, the ones on me. Huh. So all I want are track points that are sticking rock solid to the floor. And to the lead wrong ones, you can simply lasso around them and hit delete. Okay, this is looking really good at the moment. So I am now choosing a few points on the floor. And the further away they are, the better. So the further you spread your legs, the more solid you can stand. And if you have more legs, that also helps. So now let's create a solid and a camera. And we can also scale up the solid so we have a better visual reference for our floor. And now let's import our 3D model. I found mine on Sketchfab completely for free. Just make sure you search for animated files here and, well, the link is in the description. I downloaded the GLB file as this also stores the animation. Drag and drop it in and as this interacts with the floor now, you can pretty easily find the matching position for our T-Rex. Wait, this is not moving at all. What is that? <laughs> so here comes the big new feature. We now have animation options. In here we can choose from the different pre-stored animations. Well, I go with the <coughs> So, the cool thing about this is that you can retime this if you want and if there are no keyframes you could go for example to a super slow motion and it will render it super super smooth as this is 3D animation data and no keyframes. So far so good. Well, or so far so okay. Because this isn't looking good at all. We can't show that to Steven Spielberg. Huh. Let's improve. So we need two things. First, shadows. And for that we need second, light. So let's start with that. I am creating an environment light and this already makes this look a bit better. <laughs> but I want to light this scene realistic, meaning with a hard sunlight, well, basically the same light as it was in the park. And in the environment light, I can set up an HDRI file. This is a 360 degree image that you can either shoot yourself on location. Hey, and I did that in my Iron Man tutorial. So if you want to know more about that, you can find the link also in the description. Or you can simply download an EXR file with the same settings. And this is what I have done here. Hey, and the surrounding will also be visible in your reflections. Well, if you have some. 
And this is important to understand because if we would have reflections, I would use a high res image like 4K or even 8K. But as I'm using it only for lighting, I will get away with only 1K resolution. But the good thing about this is that this is the biggest render time saver you can have. Trust me, I've tried and compared it. Okay, and now we are actually getting somewhere. Let's use the transform of this to bring the light EXR into the right position. So think about this as a large sphere where the image is projected onto and now we are rotating that sphere. Here the T-Rex looks great. Hey, but where is our shadow? Hmm. Didn't I say the light will cast a shadow? But where is it? Ah, okay. Let's enable our solid again that we created as a reference for our floor. And here we go. This also helps positioning the light as we can see the shadow direction now. Of course, I want this solid to only show the shadows and not also show itself. Hmm. But at the moment, this is just not possible. Hmm. So be aware, if you watch this in the future, you may find that this setting is enabled and you are good to go. But for all you living in the present, here's how to do it. Copy the light and therefore also the EXR file, the dyno, the camera and the floor and pre comp it and disable it for now. On our Dino, we can now disable shadows over here, which means we also don't need the floor right now. Okay. Now let's go into our new shadow comp and set the Dino to only cast shadows and make the floor white in the solid settings. On the white solid, go to the material settings and only turn on diffuse and ambient. And in that way, our solid stays white and only casts shadows and no reflections, which is exactly what we want. A black and white image of our shadow, because back in our main comp, we can now set this to multiply and voila, we have our shadow. Hey, with a levels effect, we can now define our shadow in the exact way we want. And if you want to make it pop even more, you can add additional lighting to this with all lights you already know about. Because, you know, sometimes realistic is just realistic, but not cinematic. So let's maybe add a spotlight behind our T-Rex to give it even more sunlight and we can see its silhouette even more. <laughs> yeah, you know, Spielberg will love this. And before we close this off, two rendering tricks. For the T-Rex itself, we don't need to go all the way up with the shadow render settings, but with the overall settings here. And the exact opposite is the way to go for the shadow. So let's crank this up to its max in the shadow settings to get the best result here. I have rendered both of the layers separately, so I can now start fine tweaking a bit easier. For example, I add a little bit of motion blur to the dyno with the pixel motion blur effect. Why only a bit? Well, because we filmed in 60 frames per second. Oh, and a trick here. Before starting the shot, I rendered it out with 30 frames. So I do not have to track twice the amount of frames or render twice the amount, you know? Work smarter, not harder. And as promised, here is a spoiler to what will be next on flow motion. Because 3D seems to be a huge thing and I'm going to show you how to use AI to create 3D animations and I'm also going to show you how to fine tweak those in After Effects as well as in Blender. And pro tip here, if you subscribe to my channel, you will not miss this one. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun in Jurassic World. Thank you.